Hello and welcome back to the Peru Travel Podcast. I'm your host, David Kozlowski, alongside me, Charlie Thompson. Today, we've got Kevin Grow on the line, and we're going to be digging in into the top five things you should be bringing to the Inca Trail. Dave, I just don't think you introduced that very well. This is the first time Kevin, our very good friend and partner with us, uh, on the phone with us for this episode. This is exciting. Kevin, what's going on, my man? I definitely have to say I'm a little nervous. It's the first time I've ever done a podcast been on the radio, so it's uh, definitely a new experience for me, but I'm excited. Well, you sound fantastic. Kevin's on the phone right now, but he is coming down here to, to Kevin's Nashville. Kevin's on the phone right now, yeah. He's, he's, he'll be in studio pretty st- soon. He's stating the obvious. Uh, Kevin, we'll break <laughs> We'll break right into the norm. Uh, you, you cut me off. You didn't let my lead come in. I was saying he's moving here Charlie, to Charlie missed his calling. I think he really wanted to be a radio DJ and like back in like the nineties when it was a really cool thing to do. And now everybody's doing podcasts and we talk normal and we, Hey, welcome. Charlie's on the phone right now. <laughs> uh, I'm being an ass. Uh, welcome guys to the Peru travel podcast. Again, like I said, we're going to break down the top five things to bring on the Inca trail and Kevin, our partner is on the phone with us. We're really excited about that. Uh, Kevin, you know, you're our gear junkie, right? You're the guy who knows everything about equipment, right? Of course, he would say probably not, right? I assume Kevin would be like, well, I don't know everything. Yeah, he's a humble man. Yeah, but he does know a lot about equipment. Uh, Kevin, give me some of your background real quick about the kind of the, some climbs you've done. I know you're big into mountaineering, you're big into rock climbing. Give me some of the kind of the things that you've done in the past that really kind of establish why it is you're the guy that should be talking about gear. Um, I guess, uh, you know, like like you were saying, I don't I don't know everything about gear. There's a lot that that's out there, but um, I guess uh, about five years ago or so, when I moved to California, uh, just one of my best friends got me into uh, uh, rock climbing, and um, we were uh, we were doing some some pretty gnarly gnarly stuff. We we started with some small climbs, some one pitch climbs, doing, uh, and then eventually just got into doing some overnight stuff. Uh, got up into decent Sierras and. You know, which in, in requires a lot of gear. You got to have all your camping stuff, all your overnight backpack and stuff, in addition to to all the all your climbing stuff. Um, so, including what does that look you know, like? Everything that's going to keep you safe on the trail. Yeah, I mean, what does that look like? In a sense, you, you said like essentials, and you talk about the Eastern Sierra. I was like, what about people who don't know that? Give me some some kind of uh, understanding of how imp- how big that is of doing those things. Well, I guess I guess the uh, how in in scope of how big that is. Uh, Eastern Sierras is, is basically the pinnacle for, for alpine climbing. Like if you're, uh, if you're going to be an alpine climber, which is where you're going up and you're climbing mountains, um, rather than, you know, just kind of playing around in your backyard doing climbing some, some small boulders. I mean, if you're doing alpine stuff that you're the Eastern Sierras is, is where it's at. It's world-class climbing. So you need to be, you need, you need to have all, all the best gear that you have and you got, you got to know what you're doing. So you'd say you're a pro. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say I'm a pro now. Definitely not. Are you so, above um, intermediate? I've learned, I've learned a bit. I am. I am above intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would call you a pro, Kevin. In my eyes, you're a pro. Yeah, he's above the the <laughs> average human when it comes to gear and topics of that. Uh, real quick, before we do get into the first one, Kev, what uh, you've told me some stories in relation to kind of your backpacking days. Uh, has there ever been a time where you failed where you were like, man, I wish we would have brought more gear or I wish we would have brought this or less of this? Um, actually, usually the opposite. Usually, uh, when it comes to gear, we've usually gone the other direction where we're saying, I wish we went to brought so much stuff because it's just, you're, you're slogging through, a either slogging through a climb or slogging through a, through a hike and you're just tired and miserable. It's kind of funny because it kind of sounds like like our first Inca Trail experience or our Wamanu Valley experience where I told you it was a great idea to build a, bring a bunch of film equipment. And then the whole time there was complaining and anger and frustration between everybody that was there. <laughs> even, even that? Yeah, every, uh, every pound counts. That, this last trip we took to Peru, uh, those of you that have listened that know that we went to Peru not that long ago, I was, when we got back, I was telling Dave, I'm like, dude, I carried this gimbal, which is a, it's a thing that holds a camera. It's probably, it's not that heavy, like what, five to 10 pounds. And I told Dave, I was like, I carried this thing around the whole time and we used it once. <laughs> we only used it once, but it was good to have. It, it was a good to have. Yeah. I mean, it created some good footage for the Ryan video that everybody seems to love, even though videos like that don't typically do on social media, but I'm not going to talk about that right now because 
It breaks my heart. Art is not appreciated anymore. Yeah, Dave. Dave's a little butthurt about it. Yeah. He is. That's, did you guys hear him at the beginning of the episode? I mean, he was just peanut butter and jealous. Yeah, that's right. Peanut butter and jealous. Um, <laughs> all right, Kev. So let's talk about the first thing that you can think of that you're like, hey, this is for sure something that you got to bring on the Inca Trail. Um, I would definitely say some waterproof uh, hiking boots. Waterproof um, hiking boots. You know, you're going to be out there. Yeah, you're going to be out there on the trail for four days, three nights if you're doing the Inca Trail. And, you know, if, if you get your your – your shoes soaking, your socks soaking wet on that, that first day. You're just, you're going to be miserable and you're going to be cold the rest of the hike. That's good to know. I'm, I mean, so something that I got to ask is like, when you say waterproof, does that mean they got to go above the ankle? Are we talking like, can it be hiking shoes? Does that really matter? Um, it, it can definitely be hiking shoes. It could be hiking boots, whatever you're more comfortable with. Uh, there's definitely been a little bit of a trend in the last, uh, I'd say five years or so in a move more towards hiking shoes. Um, but I would say if you're someone with, with weak, weak ankles and you need a little bit more support, then I, I tend towards more of the boots. I know a guy with weak ankles. That's for all you tall guys out there <laughs> like me, you know, <laughs> living the dream with your bad I'm joints, bad knees, bad ankles. Yeah. Get the tall boots if you're tall. So, okay. Uh, we've got the rain boots or we've got, excuse me, we've got the boots or the hiking shoes that are waterproof. We don't want to get our socks, wet, our feet wet. What's number two on your list, my man? Uh, I would say number two on, on my list would be, it, it depends on what time of the year that you're going to Peru or you're going to do the Inca trail. Um, if you're going a little bit closer to the rainy season, uh, you're going to be, you're definitely going to be wanting a, a rain jacket. Uh, same, same concept. You know, you don't want to get wet. You don't want to get cold. You don't want to be miserable. You want to have fun. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. Um, you said you don't want to get cold. I mean, is there an alternative in turn something that can get wet that can still keep you warm and in the sense that maybe it's not the rainy season, but if it rains, you want to stay warm. Is there something that you can recommend? Um, well, there's a few different other, if it's not the, the rainy season, there's a couple other routes you could go. Um, I would probably say in that situation, either way, whether you're going the rainy season or the dry season, you're going to want a puffy jacket. Uh, and, and, uh, generally a down jacket is a little bit better. You can go ahead and get a synthetic, which, um, does keep your, uh, uh, keep you a little bit warmer during, if, if it gets wet, um, whereas down is not going to keep you warmer if it gets wet, but, uh, super quickly. I mean, nowadays they're, they're starting to put, uh, water resistant down into, uh, into sleeping bags, into, into jackets. So, you know, you could still get wet and keep it warm. Sure. That sounds good to know. Um, all right. So we got the first two. What is the third? And and before you answer this, I'm sure this is transversible, if you will. So like what you bring on the Inca trail, you could also bring on the Salcante track as well. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's going to be very similar scenarios. I mean, you're going to be hiking, you know, multi-day and multi-night uh, track. So it's going to be, it's going to be very similar. Okay. Well, and, and I want to remind people too, like, even though you're going to South America and Peru, parts of Peru is really close to the equator. You're hiking 14, 15, 16, 17,000 feet. So it gets cold up there, whether, you know, it's middle of the summer or not. I like how he called it the equator, like the equator. He really emphasized the E on that. <laughs> it's the e equator <laughs> right in the like, middle. I think I do that for Vegas. Like I say Vegas weird. Everyone's like, what is it? It's up Vegas. It's Vegas or something like that. Yeah. Vegas <clears throat> equator. Um, all right, third, what do you got, Kev? I'd say the third thing is a, is a headlamp. Um, you know, if, uh, you know, you got to get up in the middle of the night, use the bathroom, you know, you, you got to have something, you got to be able to see where you're going. You don't want to stop and step wrong, roll your ankle and, um, you gotta, you know, you got to be able to see where you're going. So headlamp is definitely going to be high on the list. You could bring a flashlight, but I mean, then you're, you're, you're you got to, you're taking up one hand versus you got a headlamp to throw it on your head and. And you got both hands free to, to use them as, as you need. Sure, sure. So with that being said, on the headlamp part, uh, I got to do a quick plug because we talk about the bathrooms and we know what happens on that third night, Kev. You're you're hiking into, excuse me, what is the second night? I think it's the second night. <laughs> the little location where the, the things are uh, underneath the bathroom, they say. They give you this haunted story about... Uh, people potentially going to be pulling your leg in the middle of the night. We were all terrified to go in the bathroom. So we actually went into another company's bathroom that they brought a porta bathroom. And when we started Kachi, we had said, 
we are making sure that our guests have a porta potty bathroom that is given or brought with us <laughs> every hiking trip. So if you are on tour with us or on travels with us, excuse me, one of our travelers, you will get a bathroom that has popped up, a pop-up tent, if you will, for your nice comfortableness in the wilderness to go to the bathroom, which is actually really nice. It sounds silly, but when you're out hiking for four or five days, it definitely is a blessing to have a nice John to sit on. It also uh, <laughs> prevents you from uh, bringing some, any ghosts home with you. That's right. Ghosts are bad. You don't want ghosts. So the headlamp, important at the top of the list, going to need some batteries too. So with that, Kevin, what is the fourth thing that you would bring on the Inca Trail? Uh, you're going to want some hiking poles. I mean, you're doing a lot of tons and tons and tons of elevation gain uh, going down in elevation on the, on the trail. I mean, you're looking at 26 miles um, in addition to carrying your, your pack. Um, I mean, with... Uh, over with with us over at uh, at Kashi, you know we're you're still going to carry some of your own personal items, but uh, once again, here, here's another plug for Kashi. But we, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna give you a half porter to carry a lot of a lot of your items, take the weight off your shoulders. But either way, you know you're gonna be you're gonna be putting a lot of uh, uh, of weight and pressure and uh, on your knees. And hiking poles takes about forty percent off the weight the weight off your knees, so that. No, that saves you over the long run over those four days. Yeah, definitely. I'm curious. Well, I'm not curious. I know. I mean, we still saw when we went and visited again that people continually still buy the wooden poles. I mean, off your research, Kev, I, I know we've talked about this and I'm not an expert on this, but uh, it sounds like those poles are typically from the rainforest and it, and it definitely is part of the de- deforestation process. Um, would you agree or disagree? Uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely agree. I mean, if you're buying wooden poles from from Peru, you're, you're probably buying uh, uh, something that was was taken from the rainforest. Yeah, that's... Um, also, in addition, I will say for for those of you out there that uh, it is your very first backpack or, or hike ever, you are absolutely going to want the, the hiking poles. My first ever backpack. I, I mean, I made it a quarter a quarter mile of the way in, and it was an eight mile hike up about you know, about a mile up in the elevation gain. And I didn't think I would make it. And if I didn't have the poles, there's absolutely no way I would have made, made it. That's crazy. That's funny. I feel like uh, my first hike, I had poles and it was still miserable, but that's beyond the side. <laughs> well, my first hike, I had to borrow Kevin's poles. And Your first hike, you still had to borrow miserable. a horse. And then I got, yeah, I got on a horse. <laughs> Look, I made it over halfway. We talked about this. Like, my first hike, I had to take poles. And now I, you bought a horse. No, <laughs> I borrowed Kevin's port. I, I did borrow Kevin's poles until I got a horse. That's awesome. Uh, last one on the list, Charlie man. Also liked, uh... Go ahead. Uh, Charlie, Charlie also liked uh, a lot of rocks on that first hike. Yeah. Great stuff, Kev. So we're coming up to the end of the episode here, which means we got to hit that final one. What is the fifth item on your list that you are for sure someone needs to bring on the Inca Trail? Uh, you're going to want some sort of hydration system. Uh, I'd say the gold standard is a camelback. Uh, and if you're going to go uh, the camelback route, which is makes everything really nice and easy. I mean, you, you can just throw the water in your backpack and it's got a nice little straw for you to sip out of. You don't got to take it in and out of your pack. Um, but if you're going to go that route, definitely go with the biggest uh, uh, liter or, or size that you can get. So 12 I mean, liters? You can always uh, – sorry, we'll, we'll say three liters. You're, you're <laughs> going to want to go with three liters because, because uh, you know, you can always – you don't have to put in – you don't have to maximize the amount of water in the pack. You can always – you know, if you want to, you can put one liter in, you can put two liters in. You don't have to, to put the whole thing in. So it's always easier to go down. You can't ever add anything. So we're laughing over here because I'm laughing originally because I'm, like the, st- I'm still laughing about the 12 liters. <laughs> yeah. I'm picturing it in my mind somebody carrying 12 I got the biggest liters pack. <laughs> Kevin Grow told me to get the biggest pack, so I did. And the best part about it is I remember I remember before we went on the, uh, to Peru with Charlie. Charlie was like, well, I'm a pretty big guy, guys. I can carry more than you. And Kevin's like, no, don't. I never silly. said more. I just said, you know, I'm still a horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Charlie just Charlie guess what? Our, water, our, camel, our camel, if you will, with guess a bunch what? of water on his back. I made it. I made it. So he, all you out there who think you can't make it, you can. That's right. He went, we went the fun route. Uh, that anytime, means, anytime we talk about the Inca Trail, the gear is important. Very, very important. But anytime we talk about the Inca Trail, I always want to mention, Kevin, I know you can back me up on this. Dave, you as well. Anytime we see people talk about the Inca Trail, they always talk about 
well, I'm just going to go and I'm going to wait until I get to Peru to book it, or I, I want to go next month. The most important thing about the Inca Trail is that this thing sells out six months in advance and it's heavily regulated by the government. So keep that in mind when you're looking to book the Inca Trail. We hope you go with us, Kachi, KachiLife.com. But even if you don't, anybody you go with, it has to be at least six months in advance because this thing is always sold out. That's right. Look at you, man. Coming in hot. I'm proud of it. I'm going to give a high. F- oh, that's a high five right there for me listening. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us, Kevin. Thanks for calling in, man. Can't wait to get you here and in person on the podcast. Again, I'm your host, David Kozlowski, Charlie Kevin. Thompson, and Kevin Grow on the phone. We are Kachi. Thanks, guys, so much for listening. Can't wait to talk to you next week. 